they one day one fella felt red bird, he used to come up here and he come out, he died. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that now. And uh he come up here and, and uh he come from Pennsylvania, he got three little children. He he always wanted to act like he wanted to I hate to put that in there, but <laughs> it's all right, Maury. He act like he wanted to flirt, but I wanna have it. <laughs> I'm originally from Illinois, been in Kentucky since nineteen ninety four, so I'm a Kentuckian now. The man in charge of coordinating nearly 3,000 volunteers each year is Dennis Sparenberg. His office and his home are both located in the part of the mission campus known as Work Camp. Dennis knows many of the residents in this area well, and he, as well as anyone here, understands that family tragedy is often a heartbreaking part of their story. Lucy and Linda, uh, have had their struggles. I love Redbird so much. Uh, Linda lost her dad, Lucy, her husband, in 1994 in a car wreck to where Linda was almost, uh, almost killed as well. They've struggled making a go of it, listening to her sing and sitting in their house visiting with them. Never downbeat, no matter how bad it seems to be. Uh, always upbeat about what can happen. I know this experience we're having is teaching us in a way we never imagined. Miss Mary said this morning that she was blessed, but I believe we're the ones receiving the blessing, as this lady seems to know something that most of us only aspire to. <laughs> well, God give us life, and we're supposed to enjoy it, is how I see it. Gave us life. I've had a lot of hard times in my life, but uh, I, I never carried it around on my shoulder. My sister, you know, there's much a difference at daylight and dark. And, uh, but I had one brother that was just like me. Mm -hmm. One that, uh, my mom built that little house for out there and uh, he got killed down here on the road. He got uh, hit with a car. He got to getting out on the road walking and he was younger than me. I tried to keep him here. I begged him that evening not to go down the road. And uh, sometimes I want to get rid of the, that little house out there, but I, I can't. It's just a five leaf here. Isn't that lovely? Yes. Yeah, how could you miss all these? I can't believe I brought you we out We were here. overlooking them. <laughs> Here's another one. I'm looking over a four-leaf clover that I overlooked before. I was here yesterday. <laughs> so that's why I overlooked them. Amen. She'll be right back over here next year. You wouldn't know it at first glance, but Vera's family is still recovering from a terrible incident involving her sister and brother. Vera's sister, uh, Terry, tells the story of what happened. The right arm and the right leg was broke twice. Yeah, they thought there my neck was probably broke. All my main extremities were broke. And my pelvis was broken for a place. When the truck stopped, I pretty much knew I had two broke arms. And everything kept popping and cracking and burning, and I'd feel burning and popping sensation. She and her brother were in an automobile accident. He was killed. She had every bone in her body broken. The tie rod on the truck broke, and it went from this side of the road to that side, and it, it went into a big rock wall. There were two people that went passed us after the accident. They never offered to stop. And uh, there was a nurse that was going from Memorial to Redbird. 
and she stopped. And she said, honey, said, do you need help? And I said, Lord have mercy, yes, I need, we need help. And she's the one that called 911. They used uh, the jaws of life on my door. And I think he lived about two hours after, after the accident. She has a tub that's too high and she can't get in it. We're going to take the old tub and modify it and make it lower so she can get in. You look at her today, two years later, and she shouldn't have been able to walk. And yet she pushed and she pushed until she was able to walk. She was determined. As a lot of people would say, well, I bet a quarter she never walks no more. Some point they thought they would have to take amputate that leg. And I told the surgeon, I said, you better pray real hard. <laughs> I said, you gotta pray harder. I said, they just won't be any days like that where I'm gonna let go of that leg. And so I got through it. Well, let's make sure that my hair is all right. Oh, <laughs> The lady is a totally amazing lady. And her attitude is just totally awesome. Totally awesome. This is my new friend, Terry. This is my new friend. With the help of volunteers from Indiana, Tim Baugh and his family were able to move into their new home. And Tim has committed himself being a dedicated and compassionate crew leader at the mission. Over the past year, he has assembled a scrapbook, and the many volunteers that he has worked with have filled its pages with stories of thanks and appreciation. Kansas. One of the way I look at it is, is the crows that I get to meet. I'm the thumb and they're the finger. It ain't so many. How many boards or nails and screws that you can put down on somebody's house? Right. It might be just going out and maybe touching someone. Well, I had one lady uh, this year, she lost her husband about four months prior to us going out there. And I mean, it, it was amazing. And more or less, this crew got to pull her out of her shape. And I mean, she, she was standing in tears when, when I left up there, when the crew left, and, you know, it touched me. It touches me that all these people come down here and they help out other people. And, you know, God blessed me with all good crew. Actually, the ones in this book right here, I wished I could get back, because, which I know there's a lot more Awesome groups out there, but you know, I work with these. <laughs> Many not for profit community service organizations in the nation, as compassionate as they may be, are yet unable to effectively provide services and resources to this part of the United States. The challenging terrain, the scattered populations, and cultural uniqueness make it difficult for many of the traditional service organizations to operate here. But Redbird has worked exclusively in this area since the 1920s. And it has developed a unique, comprehensive approach to community service. There's really no industry in this area to speak of other than the coal mines. Beyond the mines, there's really nothing within a reasonable distance as far as employment goes other than the mission. Economic opportunity buys crafts from local crafters, gives them a monthly income, um, and we do pretty well. We sell those crafts and those local crafters uh, are able to make more and sell more to us. 
Um, some of these crafters are a dying breed. There aren't too many people out there left. One of the things we did with Ray is his initial products were just simply painted figures. And so we said, what else do you like to do? Which is actually a rather typical question. And so in his case, he liked doing scroll saws. If we can help someone get the idea they can make quantum jumps in what they produce, and they go way above and beyond anything that we ever anticipated for them. He found out, for instance, instead of cutting out one ornament at a time, he cuts out six. And you're enabling people to see the hope and the possibilities they have, and the result of that is they realize they are good. And then also we work with the crafters to see if we can improve their uh, method of production, their acquisition of raw materials, the things that can help them increase the amount of money they can make. And then to perhaps, if they want an opportunity to be an entrepreneur, help guide them on forward into ways that they can start shipping, uh, doing wholesale sales and those kind of things to make them responsible for their own marketing system. I think the best example is that when we work with a craftsperson until they get so good at what they're doing and so many people are ordering from them that we have to wait in line for them to fill our orders again. That's a success story. They share their love and their faith so openly with us that you can't help but feel God everywhere. A lot of times people fail to realize how much need there is in your own backyard. And the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to get saved.